Greetings, I'm Big Hand Bro in the video. I relocated once more. It isn't about the 37th season, wondering why no one contacts me. Nevertheless, these bargains are irresistible for a person like myself without a phone. Flaunting the Radiator 5 Pro under the radar, today I put to the test one, take apart one, with clarity as the centerpiece. To save your valuable time, I've pre-dismantled it. The device is straightforward. We'll proceed with the usual steps. No shortcuts, it's pure perfection. The dimensions and build of the Red Devil Radiator 5 Pro were somewhat foreseen from its specifications, boasting a 36-watt capacity. While one might expect a hefty size to live by the adage anticipate the unanticipated, its unexpectedly small and refined appearance was a delightful revelation. Even at a slender 59.2 mm across, it could be deemed remarkably thin for a potent gadget. The cooling module's size suits well for indoor use, allowing mobility and retains its neat allure despite the bracket with a width of 63.65 mm and a total weight of 113.3 grams, lighter than one might presume. It's less than you could foresee. The front is all about the motherboard design details, fully transparent. You might wonder if it looks too complex, but even on the minimalist Sony, it doesn't seem out of place or awkward. Perhaps in an effort to reduce unnecessary weight aside from the fan base plate, this time, the RGB is just three small beads on the motherboard without light guide plates for effect, mainly focusing on the logo. What do you think of this aesthetic? Especially combined with the transparent silver wing version of the Red Magic 9 Pro, it has a certain feel, right? Just a small suggestion, I hope they could create a version with white light, I believe it would complete the package. Regarding the bracket, it's standard fare. Using the iPhone 15 Pro Max as a test case, it manages the device's heft, stable and less shaken roughly. It tolerates up to about 0.3 millimeters, close to three A4 papers in thickness. For case usage, my recommendation is to pair with a magnetic layer or add a tiny clasp. Despite its petite size, it fits even larger models like the Samsung S24 Ultra with a fair margin. Covering electrical connections and button spaces, it accommodates most phones, and occasionally it serves as a makeshift stand. Two improvements could be made, including the latch installation. The physical switch can be challenging to reach during use. Another point is the presence of certain lines, like the one originating from the Red Magic, which may be blocked due to its size and thus cannot fully plug in, while the contact surface on the edge is commendable. The size and area are quite remarkable, almost matching a one-to-one -one ratio, extending over 3,300 square millimeters. This is quite substantial when compared to last season and could be viewed as dominant, potentially without any competition this season. Furthermore, the pure copper cooling plate is comprehensive, circumventing issues previously encountered where the contact surface had a sizable, ineffective region of note is the substantial thickness of no less than 0.2 millimeters, not as flimsy as paper, ensuring full contact. Even without copper foils, the cooling objective can be realized although operating without any load is not cost efficient. Focusing on timely results rather than sticking to older cooling methods is commendable. No need to elaborate on the thermal sandwich structure, but the cooling key is genuinely impressive. The overall thin area maximized. It appears that the aluminum alloy surface has been sprayed with a carbon-based material to enhance thermal radiation. The highlight is the solid base plate of the entire cooling system, which is the legendary VC heat spreading plate with an impressive area and a center thickness of 2 millimeters. As we know, consistent and efficient cooling is often the key in semiconductor cooling, and although many coolers start strong, over time they can't escape the heat rebound. This is where the Red Magic's new VC heat spreading plate comes in, theoretically capable of significantly boosting overall circulation as if even the fan. The regions unreachable by the bottom fan now have a chance to stand tall again, and the actual outcome holds promise. Also, it's worth noting that the thermal grease used here is rather substantial. Despite a nearly 25% loss upon disassembly, there remains an ample amount. You can judge for yourselves. As for the air ducts, while they mainly accommodate the 60 form factor, they preserve both upward and downward airflow to prevent disrupting the manual and infrared perspective. This design seemingly avoids heat recirculation from heating up the phone. Yet considering the special arrangement of the air ducts, even with heat insulation behind the motherboard, the upper left and lower right sectors still get warm when the device is in use. The rationale behind the staggered airflow remains an enigma. The G backplate is designed to be extremely flat to maximize effect. In our tests, the part where double flashing was stacked was attached using this clamping position on the Red Magic device. At 25 degrees Celsius room temperature within 10 minutes, the idle cold plate's coldest point can cut down about 20 degrees Celsius in roughly 12 seconds, reaching 0 degrees Celsius with the lowest at negative 5 degrees. The overall temperature drop is 30 degrees Celsius. The full fan power at the beginning of the cooling phase hits a peak of 37.21 watts, then stabilizes between 24 to 25 watts, averaging at 24 to 93 watts. As expected, the Red Magic's standout feature is its stability consistently maintaining below negative 5 degrees without significant bounce back. Of course, some may feel that an idle temperature of negative 5 
5 degrees is perhaps too minimal. This is mainly because, although it's considered idle, the actual load is the cooling plate itself, which in the case of Red Magic is large and thick, disadvantaging it against smaller, thinner competitors. Indeed, some shortcomings are apparent. When using 3D Mark on Red Magic 9 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max, Red Magic's own fan was on the second setting, whereas the iPhone endured maximum stress conditions. In these trials, the Red Magic's warmest areas were cooled by an average of 9.5 degrees Celsius. The CPU's heat was reduced by 6.9 degrees Celsius, the GPU by 6.8 degrees Celsius, and the battery's heat dropped by 11.3 degrees Celsius. The Red Magic operated with an average energy consumption above 13 watts when in performance mode, which is noteworthy. The iPhone, having limited compatibility with this application, understandably had a very low temperature. The highest average Average spot temperature dropped by almost 11.1 degrees Celsius. Certainly any colder and it would barely register on the thermal sensor. We selected Star Metal for our 30 game analysis, predicting it would induce more heat. Even with the room temperature at 30 degrees Celsius, the heat sink's performance remained consistent with earlier intense testing, showing reliable cooling. The average temperature decrease for the CPU, GPU, and battery were 9 degrees Celsius, 6.8 degrees Celsius, and 6 degrees Celsius correspondingly, with the battery temperature falling by 9.7 degrees Celsius. Examining the iPhone under less than ideal circumstances, the best average frame rate was a mere 38 FPS. With the limitations in place, the frame rate jumped by 1.5 watts, averaging at 56.8 FPS. The frame rate drop was predictable due to the constant running conditions, leading to frame losses at similar intervals each time. In essence, setting aside optimization challenges with the imposed restrictions, what was once unplayable can now operate at maximum frame rate. Regarding temperature, the mean temperature saw a 7 degrees Celsius decline across the device with the battery's heat also diminishing. At 10.2 degrees Celsius, for a more typical usage case, we opted for a spot 30 centimeter in front of the monitor and behind the radiator. We started measuring the sustained sound pressure level with the highest setting lights on after the device warmed up for a minute. A reading of approximately 41 0.7 decibels with lows at 41.2 and highs at 43.5 decibels. Additionally, the standard preset level is about 37.3 decibels. Given the profound silence of our lab-grade test environment, stating the official noise level as 35 decibels is precise, though this figure pertains to the normal operating range rather than the highest setting. Analysis using a one-third octave band indicates that at the peak setting, the noise in the higher frequencies, to which the human ear is more sensitive, is notably more intense than at the default. Specifically, around 1250 Hz, the default setting is ideal. Conversely, with more low and ultra-low frequencies and less high-frequency noise, the overall sound profile gives the impression that this mode is significantly quieter than the maximum setting. Those interested might want to give it a simple listen. Software-wise, cooling support adjustments can be provided via Bluetooth connectivity through the Red Magic Play app, which also facilitates firmware updates for the cooler. For Red Magic smartphones, GameSpace also offers options. Temperature settings include intelligent control and a manual sliding bar with a total of 41 levels on Android and an infinite range on iOS, along with software switches and RGB lighting settings. The lighting can also be switched off independently. An area for improvement is, despite having a variety of settings, these options are either within the game space or the app and cannot be adjusted on the flying game without interrupting play. For Red Magic owned phones, I think it would be best to add quick access controls and a sidebar. Overall, I think this Red Magic Cooler, the Pro version, is definitely worthy of its design with its precision, robust materials, large area thickened cooling plates, a custom 36mm x 36mm Arctic cooling chip, a 2mm thick BC thermal pad, and even an abundance of thermal grease. This set offers great value for money, not to mention its performance in sub-zero conditions. It's impressive how it manages to reduce Red Devil's overheating by 9 degrees Celsius. Of course, it's yet to be seen where Red Devil stands against other competitors this season, as some are still on pre-order or simply unavailable for purchase. These questions will be contemplated in the future. What's certain is that Red, always at the forefront of innovation, whether it's dual-core turbos or unique cooling techniques, often sets trends that others follow. This time, VC liquid cooling is likely to do the same. One might wonder who'll be the first to adopt it next. That's all for this video. It might be brief, but hopefully the content was dense. If you found it interesting, please don't hesitate to like, follow, share, or save. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. I'm Dashugi, and I'll see you in the next one.